Annual Consumer Price Index inflation, or CPI inflation, was 7.9% in June, down from 8.7% in May. This figure represents the 23rd consecutive month that the CPI inflation rate has been above the Bank of England's target of a 2% inflation rate. This means that we're approaching the two-year mark of the still ongoing cost of living crisis that has been causing a lot of harm to UK households. So why has inflation in the UK been so high for so long? To answer this question, it's useful to firstly establish what we mean by high inflation. I just referred to the Bank of England's target set by the government, which is to keep the inflation rate at 2%. When the inflation rate is well above 2%, as it has been for the greater part of the last two years, we can say that inflation is high. So why 2%? Plainly speaking, 2% is a suitable benchmark for inflation because it's not too high and not too low. High inflation is harmful for households because it limits their ability to purchase the goods and services they need if wages and savings can't keep up with price rises. At the same time, negative inflation is undesirable because it limits spending. Let me explain. If you think prices are going to fall a year from now, you'll put off buying until then, which would limit growth in the economy. Okay, so we've established why the Bank of England's objective is to keep the inflation rate at 2% and how this benchmark can help us conceptualize that inflation has been high for the greater part of two years. Let's explore some of the factors that have contributed to keeping inflation high over this time. From 2012 to 2020, the yearly rate of CPI inflation in the UK was just under 2% on average. In early 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic struck and the UK entered a national lockdown. In this time, people weren't able to spend as much as they otherwise would since they were stuck at home. And alongside programs like the furlough scheme, which was necessary to prevent many from losing their jobs, altogether meant that households were able to save money. Historically, UK households haven't been big savers compared to other countries. From 2012 to 2019, the average yearly household saving ratio, or the percentage of total household resources allocated to savings, was 6.6%. .6 in 2020, this more than doubled to 15.9% for the reasons described previously. So, as COVID restrictions were lifted, people had more money in their pockets to spend than they otherwise would. And there was a lot of pent-up demand in the economy, since people had been wanting to spend this money for some time. This meant that the economy began to overheat. Now, when I say overheat, that's economist lingo for saying that there was too much demand for the available supply. Under those circumstances, inflation is natural. Let's think about it. If I'm used to selling five coffees to five customers and suddenly I have 10 customers, I'll put up my selling price until just five people can afford to buy my coffee again. In this time, supply chain bottlenecks or disruptions also contributed to rising inflation. For example, with COVID restrictions being quite strict in certain countries like China, production and shipping became disrupted. This meant that there was even less supply available for the excess demand in the economy. Altogether, this meant that both excess demand and insufficient supply drove an initial increase in prices in the months following the initial stages of the pandemic. By January 2022, the annual CPI inflation rate in the UK was 5.5%, well above the previous trend. In February 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine. A secondary consequence of that horrific invasion was that energy and food prices began to rise, since Ukraine is a big exporter of essential food like sunflower oil and wheat, while sanctions were placed on Russian energy exports. As a result, there was an immediate jump in inflation. By April 2022, the annual rate of energy price inflation was 52.2%, while food inflation rose to 6.7% altogether causing CPI inflation to reach 9%. With the annual rate of energy price inflation fluctuating around 50% from April 2022 to February 2023, it's no surprise really that CPI inflation remained high during this time. However, there were also other factors contributing to maintaining price rises. Though the initial inflation shock caused by elevated energy and food prices was external in the sense that it was affecting imported goods, it began to permeate into the domestic economy in what economists call second round effects. Let me explain. Since many industries from manufacturing to retail are reliant on energy as an input for business activity, soaring energy price inflation naturally led to price rises in other sectors. Furthermore, with inflation soaring and the labor market being competitive, 
in the sense that unemployment was low and there were a lot of job vacancies being posted, workers had bargaining power to negotiate for higher pay, causing further price rises as this extra cost to businesses was being passed on to customers. So a combination of high energy prices and second round effects kept inflation very high from 2022 onwards. So where are we now? The latest data tell us that the annual rate of CPI inflation was 7.9% in June, falling from 8.7% in May. And this fall was mostly driven by decreases in energy prices, like motor fuels, which were partially offset by increases in food prices and services prices, like restaurants and hotels. This figure of 7.9% has fallen, but it remains well above the Bank of England's target of 2% inflation. Why is that? The latest ONS figures indicate that, despite the fact that annual energy price inflation decreased by 54.2 percentage points between June 2022 and June 2023, food inflation increased at a rate of 17.3% in June. So this is partially a story of high food inflation overtaking those energy prices dropping out of the CPI basket. But it's not all about food prices. It's also the case that those second round domestic price pressures that we talked about are remaining high. We know this from measures of underlying inflation, which are measures which aim to indicate where inflation really is once transient shocks like volatile energy price rises pass. The ONS's measure of underlying inflation or core inflation was 6.9% in June, while the rate of inflation of services and non-energy industrial goods plateaued around 7%. These measures all indicate that though CPI inflation is falling as a result of energy prices increasing by less than a year ago, we still haven't seen a sustained fall in underlying inflationary pressures in the UK. In fact, these pressures are all remaining around 6 to 7% well above the Bank of England's 2% target. With interest rates at 5%, the Bank of England has shown its commitment to bringing inflation back to the 2% target. Until we see the full effect of these elevated interest rates on bringing inflation back down, it remains the case that inflationary pressures in the UK are exhibiting extreme persistence, keeping inflation high in the UK. If you want to find out more about the basics of inflation, we've got another Nisa Explains video which covers this. For a monthly inflation analysis, subscribe to our CPI tracker.